Hi, Peter Borker here, and welcome to today's edition of The Transition Guy. Now today I want to talk to you about the coronavirus, and more importantly about the coronavirus's impact on business. Now a lot of people are looking around the world and we're in panic mode. We're seeing all these cases exponentially grow, we're seeing the number of deaths grow, and quite, quite rightly governments are kind of trying their best to control the situation. Now, we expect a lot more people to die. But in my personal belief, I honestly think that coronavirus will kill far more businesses than it does people. And it goes back to a simple thing. Right now we're entering the unknown. People are scared and people are panicking. Now you've got a lot of people out there that are saying, yeah, don't worry, keep calm, don't panic, it's all going to be okay. Now, it can potentially be okay, but okay isn't going to happen just on its own. Do not be fooled. If you go back to 2000 and 2007, 2008, when all these businesses went bust, these businesses went bust not because they were bad businesses. Most of them were paralyzed by indecision. The markets had changed. The landscape had changed. They did not react quick enough. To be honest with you, most companies did not have a plan in place to execute to deal with the great financial crisis, to deal with the bank meltdown. Now, we know coronavirus is out there. We don't understand what its trajectory is going to be like. We don't fully understand what the impact is going to be. But we can see that it's having an impact. We can see that Italy's closed its borders. The US are no longer accepting flights from the EU. Things are starting to happen. The question is going to be, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to wait and hope that things just get better? which really isn't a strategy in itself. I mean, that's just going to be madness. Or are you actually going to do something about it and say, do you know what? I'm going to create a plan and I'm going to create a plan in various stages. And when things come up during those stages, I'm actually going to execute it and I'm going to do something about it. Now in this video, I want to give you a five stage plan, five areas that you really should look at and start putting an execution plan in place so that you can at least start mitigating the circumstances. You can start having a plan of action that you can execute that can give your business the best chance to survive. But in many cases, it's not just going to be about survival because there are going to be areas of opportunity that if you actually start to think differently and behave differently, this could actually be a catalyst for you and your business to thrive. It just may be that you thrive differently. So let's go through the five stages of actually areas that we need to be looking at and areas that we need to be actioning. So one of the biggest areas, the first key area we need to look at is going to be the area around our people. See, the reality is most of us, unless we're solopreneurs, We've got a team working for us, which means that without the team working for us, if our team was taken out, the question you've got to ask yourself is what impact would that have on your business? If you lost 75% of your workforce, would they be able to operate in terms of would your business survive it? And the chances are most businesses would not. And when you're talking about a seven day incubation period or a seven day stay at home, in some countries, they tell you to self-isolate for 14 days. That's a big impact in the business. Plus, you need to get the business deep cleaned and everything. That's not going to be an easy thing to deal with. So what can we do with our people? First and foremost, we need to educate our people. I'm still seeing people say, yep, I'm off to the gym. I'm off to the pub, etc. And I understand that these social gatherings, going to the gym to keep fit, it's really, really important. But people need to understand the impact of their actions. Now, going to a gym isn't a problem. But are people truly thinking about what would happen if they got the virus? What would happen if they were on the bare minimum statutory stick pay? Would they be able to pay their bills? Because the reality is you've got 14 days on statutory sick pay. That doesn't very much go, f that doesn't go very far, does it? So you've got to start thinking really responsibly, what do I need to sacrifice right now 
in order to be able to still keep working, keep earning money and keep the financial sort of household running. So first and foremost, let's go down to sort of education. Now most businesses out there, they've taken on board the whole cleaning, sort of wash your hands, etc. So that doesn't really need to be mentioned. The other thing is starting to look differently at your business in terms of remote working. Now I've had a lot of kickback over the years that I don't trust my people to be doing the work at home. I don't really think they need to be in the office. And I heard that and I'm just thinking, okay, is that reality? Or is that just us being stubborn? I do think, okay, 20 years ago, could we have done remote working? Probably not. But you look at today, do we have fantastic broadband facilities across the globe? Yeah, we do. Do we have the technology to be able to collaborate online we do we have video conferencing we've got shared applications whether it's going to be slack everest i mean you've got loads of different programs now that allow you to collaborate share and work together is this the opportunity where we start saying no do you know what let's work differently we can have people working at home we can have people not traveling and a lot of people saying okay well i'll deal with that when i deal with that no 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 you need to deal with that now. You need to start saying, okay, am I going to be corona ready? Is my people plan corona ready? And the chances are it's not. Do you have remote working in place in terms of can people access the data? Can people access your shared server? Is it all in the cloud? Do you have video conferencing capabilities? Do you have collaboration capabilities? If you don't have that stuff now, you need to start looking at it. I've been really fortunate that I probably embraced proper video conferencing and I'm not talking about a little Skype system, I'm talking about proper big full high definition video conferencing facilities about seven years ago. So to me it was second nature. It wasn't second nature when I first sort of got into it but when I look at my client base, my client base is really diverse, it's all across the world. Do you honestly think I could be doing business today with them if I had to come in contact? No. I can't fly to half the places I need to fly to right now because there's been travel restrictions. So video definitely, you need to start considering this stuff and putting it in place. Number two, you need to start looking at your supply chain. You've got your people in place, you've got that all working, you've got their mitigation there, but are your suppliers doing the same thing? Can you rely on your supply chain to keep going? And maybe you can, maybe you cannot. Have you got dual supply? Have you got triple supply? In fact, I've got a couple of clients where we've been looking at, looking at it over the last couple of weeks. And where we were so heavily reliant on China, because that's where most of the manufacturing's been done, we've got a shortfall in about two to three weeks where supply is just going to dry up. Because once that container's on the sea, we're talking about three months before it gets into your warehouse. Well, Client's got a couple of options. We can say we don't have the stock, which is drastically going to affect the revenue figures. And if you can't earn the money, you can't pay the bills, that doesn't lend itself to a very happy situation. Well, the other thing is now we're starting to find alternate supply. Now, in many cases, we're having to look at European manufacturers. And yes, by going European, is it much more expensive? Yes, the costs are much higher. But at the end of the day, is it better to have a higher supply cost and guarantee continuity. And you know what? Customers will be expecting price rises because the typical supply and demand is if supply isn't there and supply is restricted and you can supply it and other people cannot, they will have to pay more for it because the reality is if they can't get your goods or supplies and they need it for their business, their wheels are not turning. So really you've got to look at your supply chain. Now thirdly, you've got to look at your cash position. Now a lot of businesses out there are not strong with cash. Many businesses never did fully recover from 2007, 2008, and they've been ticking along, and they've been getting by. If you're not careful, this will potentially wipe you out if you're in that kind of position. So you've got to take ownership and you've got to say to yourself, okay, how much cash have I got in front of me? If it were to go bad, 
and my revenue wasn't able to, if I, if I stopped invoicing because I couldn't deliver my services or goods, how long could I survive before I go bust? Once you've got that number, you've got to say, okay, what is my plan going to be around that? If you know you're tight on cash, you know you don't have the cash needed to get you through three months, well, go and speak to your bank. Right now, countries around the world have sort of announced measures to support businesses. You need to get in there early, show them where you're going to be sort of having your shortfall and get support now. Get support from your bank, get the financing in place. If you've got mortgage payments on your business, you've got loan repayments, and you know you're not going to be able to make them, do not kid yourself. Do not stick your head in the sand and say, okay, do you know what? I'm just going to ignore the letters that come through. No, speak to them now. Give them the heads up. They're going to expect it. They're going to sympathize and they're going to want to work with you. The last thing they're going to want to do is have you go into liquidation and then they get a nominal amount. They're better off getting a full amount by working with you. Go and speak to them. The same thing with the tax, with the IRS, the Inland Revenue, or whichever your government body happens to be in order to sort of that facilitate your sort of tax collection. Again, speak to them now. Come up with a plan. I know that in the UK, already a number of clients have managed to sort of get a deferment because the government knows that there's going to be challenges. They know what's coming. Therefore, they're going to work with you, but you cannot just ignore it. Ignoring it, you'll just get yourself into this huge big mess and that big mess will cripple you. You want to have a clear head. You don't want to be worrying about the bills. Get yourself a clear head, get this stuff sorted so you can focus on navigating your business, not dealing with the stuff that doesn't help, that drains your energy and keeps you sick with worry. Once we've got the cash nailed, we, need to, we are in a position where we need to put together a strategy. You need to start working out, okay, how are we going to attack this thing? The reality is, what can we do in this marketplace? We need to start focusing on the circle of influence, not the circle of concern. And when Stephen Covey talked about it, you can spend all your time worrying about the things that you cannot influence. No, you've got to only focus on the stuff that you've got control over. And I'll give you an example. I've got friends that run a number of quite large McDonald's franchises. One of the areas to be hit right now is restaurants. People are not going out to, to eat as much. They're starting to stay in. Okay, they're going out, they can't get food from the supermarkets because everyone's sort of panic bought, but that will rectify itself over the next couple of weeks. But whichever way you look at it, if their restaurant numbers are down because people are not going to the restaurant, they need to have a plan B. Now, a year ago, they introduced a delivery service. They introduced an app. What's interesting now is in line, so in-store sales are going down, but the Uber and sort of delivery aspect of the business is shooting through the roof. No point marketing to people telling them to come to in-store if they don't want to come in-store. So if you're a business, and you know you're not going to get people into your restaurant, what's the next best thing? Get them to order your food online. So all you do is you change your marketing strategy to encourage delivery service. And you just got to start thinking that in your business, what is your area of opportunity? Where do you need to start looking at your strategy? Where do you need to change? What does your pivot point need to look like? And for every business, it's going to be different. But there is an opportunity here. You've just got to have the strategic thought process to be able to, in a headspace, to be able to come up with it. Now, what I would probably suggest, especially if you've got teams working with you, you want to do this off-site. You want to do this in an environment where you can all have a clear head and you can be creative. Many businesses out here will have to change their business model as a result of what's going on. The question you've got to ask yourself is, do you want to be in control of that change or do you want that change imposed upon you? Now, if you change because of necessity, because it's been imposed upon you, you, you drastically reduce the, the sort of the success ratio. And that's a fact. You want to give yourself the best opportunity to succeed. The only way you're going to do that is plan in advance. 
And when you go up your strategies, make sure you've got strategies for each level. Because as we start to progress, we're going to hit different stages of this whole sort of pandemic. What you want to do is you want to have a plan for each stage of this pandemic. So you're not trying to come up with ideas as we hit the stages. You've just got your execution plan in place and you're executing a well thought out plan. Now finally, once you've got a strategy in place, what do you do? Well, you don't do what most businesses are going to do. As soon as we start hitting this kind of brick wall, the biggest mistake that companies make is that they start to sort of ratchet down their marketing. No, 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 no. What you need to do is you need to be heavy on your marketing. Because you know where you're going, you've got really clearly thought out strategy, market the heck out of your business. Let your customers know and let your prospects know you are around and you have a solution for them. I've got a client that does video conferencing. Right now, what we've done with that business, do you think we've ratcheted it down? Absolutely not. We've taken our marketing budget and we've tripled it. Now, it does help that we spent the months preceding actually working on marketing material, marketing collateral, but now is the absolute time to wind it up. Why? Because people need video conferencing. Video conferencing is going to be one of the tools that's going to enable our people to stay safe, collaborate, and keep business going. So you've got to start thinking, all right, how does your marketing need to change? Do you have a marketing strategy? And if you don't have a marketing strategy or plan, once you've done your actual three-stage strategy for the different stages of the sort of corona pandemic, then you need to have a corresponding marketing plan. Do not, do not sort of go cheap on your marketing, go effective on it. Make sure that you sort of know where your channels are, test and measure, throw it out there, but be active. In 2007, 2008, I saw so many businesses go bust as a result of the fact that their marketing just wasn't out there and people just forgot all about them because you know what, they had other things on their plate. So that's your five stage process. Your people, your supply chain, your cash, your strategy, and then your marketing plan to execute that strategy. And you know what, don't be scared to talk to people. The last thing you want right now is to be in total isolation, having those damn nasty conversations in your head. You know where you have that niggling sort of self-doubt, you're concerned, you're worried, you've got all these things sort of bugging you, you feel alone. And again, I, all I can do is talk about experience from 2007 and 8, where business owners felt trapped and they went into depression. And depression isn't going to get you out of this. Depression isn't going to get you through this. People, resilience, having a good band of friends around, a good bunch of business friends that you can rely upon, that you can brainstorm with, that understand what you're going through, and also have solutions to, to problems that you don't know you need solutions to. Hopefully a lot of this stuff has resonated with you. Please do not become a victim. Look at what you can do. You'll get through this. You just need to make sure you're properly structured to do so. If you've got any thoughts, you've got any questions, why don't you leave them in the comments below? I will answer them online. Let's let everybody else see what you're thinking. Let's get the thoughts down in on paper. Let's all act together. Let's all learn together. Let's all make sure that we sort of move forward together and let's beat this pandemic. Let's make sure that more businesses do not die of coronavirus than is needed.